I want to start with that uh, that subject, supply chain issues and uh, and related uh, shortages. You've said this morning that supply chain is expected to remain a restraining factor. Do you think we've seen the worst of the supply chain disruptions, Hakan, or can you simply not say that yet? Uh, I would, yeah, I, I would be ready to say we have seen the worst and, and now it's getting gradually better. Maybe not as fast as I thought um, some four or five months ago, but it's, it's getting better, but it will continue being a restriction uh, at least for the first uh, half of the, this year. I think nobody today is ready to say it will be normalized in, in the second half either. So continue right. gradually improvement but slow yes I, and, and a number of the chief executives say to me Hakan that they do see normalization in the second half of the year but I'm I'm never sure if that's because they really have grounds to believe that will happen or they just really don't know and understandably there's so much uncertainty so they just can't say so they say second half of the year are you expecting normalization in the second half of the year uh, no, I, I think I will wait. I was some four or five months ago maybe a bit too confident and said this is now improving, it will be normalized. So, But it happened <laughs> okay. not as fast. It's getting better, so I will be careful saying anything about the second half here. OK, it's, all right, we'll be careful uh, on that front with our forecast. Yeah. Let me ask you about pricing mm. then and what you're seeing there. Clearly you're facing higher costs as a business, many businesses facing higher costs. Are you able, mm. just give us a sense of how able you are to pass those costs on to consumers as higher prices? Yeah, uh, so far uh, it has uh, worked good and so we also have compensated for the lower volumes when we, we lost cars now uh, with lack of semiconductors. So then you improve the mix, you sell cars with a higher spec and then of course the price goes up. So, but in, in practice it's... Uh, increase of net pricing that, uh, which is happening and, and needs to happen because the raw material goes uh, up uh, but also the volumes uh, are not growing as we would like so we have been compensating mm. that and uh, you could call that almost also of course a sort of inflation I mean, raw material is going up and then uh, we increase the prices so uh, I heard earlier you talk a lot about the inflation. I mean, I think we mm. see that as well. OK, so that, that inflation narrative uh, rings true with you. Electrification and the move to electric vehicles, clearly something that is already underway. Are your plans mm. being slowed down, though, by chip shortages, supply <laughs> chain issues and the like? Is the move to EVs being delayed by all of the, the post-pandemic recovery? Mm. And then not really because uh, we are doing now the changeover is uh, based on the capacity we have in in our factories so we build as many all electric vehicles as we can and then we will increase that mid-year and then this year we will be above 10 percent of our total volume will be all electric vehicles uh, and so far we only have one range of vehicles uh, so-called 40 series so that is uh, according to plan and we will then prioritize those vehicles of course if there is a shortage mm. of uh, semiconductors so uh, we, Hakan, we, we what, think it would be wrong to slow down mm. okay uh, and Hakan what are you doing to uh, address energy efficiency and uh, energy consumption of vehicles. I'm thinking here of the weight of vehicles. I, I was reading recently that in the UK and the EU, cars are now 15% heavier than they were in 2001. You've done a good line in SUVs, um, uh, uh, of course, in those markets. Do you think that those heavy vehicles uh, and people's passion for them perhaps undercut climate uh, achievements? Mm. In a way, I mean, there is a push to bigger vehicles coming from consumer preferences. A lot of people like the SUVs and they are for bigger and heavier, so that's pushing them up. And, and of course, we put in a, a lot of batteries in the car is also increasing the weight. But uh, on the other hand, I would say when you have electric cars, uh, then you will also recuperate a lot of energy when you break the vehicles. You don't uh, transfer that into heat, you, you put it back into the batteries. So in that way, an electric car is, uh, could be a bit heavier without uh, impacting consumption. What will be really important for an electric 
electric mm. or is more the air resistant. So they need to be more streamlined and lower and so on. I think that is a trend more, uh, more important. But also we need to keep an eye on the weight, of course. You are right there. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. So the aerodynamics to, 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 uh, comes into view. Let me ask you one viewer question. I know that you've reported an EBIT margin for the fourth quarter of 4.6%. One viewer writing in to say, do you expect operating margins to tighten further? What is your expectation on that front, Hakan? No, I think our operating margins, uh, um, of course, they went down because of the, the volume, of course. We, we would have better margin if we could uh, grow. But uh, right now, I don't see any increased uh, problems on the supply side. So, so I don't see any, any further pressure on the margins either. We should. Uh, we should end this year with a stable profit level. And also, uh, I hope and our ambition is that we, for the full year, will see a growth also in our numbers.